think we need to go up and I think we'll probably get some lights people, but lights off would be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so hi, thanks for coming. I'm Eric Dice, I'm here from San Francisco. Um, and we're gonna move quite quick because I have <laughs> way too much to tell you about. Um, if you are a, like a live tagger person, if maps and a synesthetes atlas would be nice tags for me because it'll link up with other things I've done. Okay, um, this is the San Francisco skyline as it looks pretty much today. Uh, the building with the circle on the top is new-ish and really kind of shook things up and pissed off a lot of people. Um, prior to this, we had the Bank of America building. It left the famous Transamerica Pyramid, a little bit to the right of that. And then a business, a building which I had never heard called Tweezer Towers before until I looked at its Wikipedia page, but it has these twin towers. All of those things were about 800 feet high, and then Salesforce Tower came along and was built to 1,100 feet. There had been this sort of gentleman's agreement that you would agreement that you wouldn't build above that, but they went nuts. Um, this is a film I made in 2016. The building was under construction there. I'm only showing this because of that, but you can see these twin cranes and the elevator core going up. This film was really about um, the reflection of windows in the East Bay, but it also shows kind of the landscape circa 2016. This is a tribute to a filmmaker who passed away, Peter Hutton. Um, very, uh, actually the fog is on the film. This stock went, uh, was expired in like 1990. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, most of that's just film grain and, and very old stock, 1990s stock, in the light. Yeah, um, and you know the building I have a relationship with because if this is my view out my office window, building's right there. When I go out the front door in the morning, there it is, looking at me. So, um, just a little bit about the architecture of it. The top of it is hollow. It's these perforated aluminum panels that are eight stories high. Um, keep those perforations in mind. This is a fabrication stage where it's horizontal and not upright. They have these stems attached to them. On, on each stem is one of these units, which has two LED projecting onto it. So there's 11,000 of these, 22,000 LEDs around the whole building. They project onto the building, which reflects back. So it's quite a dithery thing. It's not a very crisp image. Um, and uh, yeah. There's an, oh, I should say, this was designed by an artist named Jim Campbell, whose thing is low resolution imagery. Um, his work is up there every day, showing scenes around town, the bay, Market Street, you know, various, various points of view around town, replaying footage of the city during the day. But at night, there's this artist pro project that happens after midnight. So um, I sent in a proposal. I wasn't actually sure this was an open proposal to the public, but I happened to see one. Um, and I thought, you know, it'd be cool to do like the view shed all around this building and kind of bounce around depending on where you can see it. Uh, way too complicated for that display. I don't know, they rejected it anyway. So I did a second one um, and this was also rejected. A little disappointing. And then one day in November, I woke up quite early in the morning and found this email. And I was pretty convinced that if I went back to sleep and woke up, it would not be there when I woke up, but in fact it was. So. Uh, we started having conversations in November, and I had this uh, commission to do this piece. Yeah, it is awesome. And the question I'm going to ask is, how did I get here? Kind of a David Byrne question, right? Um, Ten years ago, I gave this talk uh, in D.C. at State of the Map, and what I was looking at was using, you know, I'm interested in experimental film. I worked in 60 millimeters, you saw at the beginning, but um, I really was trying to consolidate my skills, so I realized that what we use in mapping, especially on the front end, um, is really kind of a weird, constrained form of drawing tools or animation tools. And then I kind of sort of proposed a few things from experimental film that might be use, used to make interesting um, works based on cartography or interesting cartography based on these ideas. So um, I'm gonna go quite quickly, but there is an article coming out in Nasus's Cartographic Perspectives any day now, so you can read more detail about it there if you're interested. Um, I'm inspired by what's known as structural film. This film, Ernie Gare's Serene Velocity, basically does alternating zooms down a hallway, and with the zoom increasing as it goes, and instead of just focusing on depth, it actually scatters your perception all over the place. It's quite interesting. Uh, I'm interested in color flicker film. These are, this is a piece by Paul Sheritz where Different color fields overlap and change and the view in the gallery is never the same. This is from the 70s. Um, experimental animation. 
piece by Paul Grabicki, very graphic. Um, I particularly like the way the chair has this sort of strong 3D look and then he materializes into the uh, page. Uh, I'm interested in light and space movement. If you've ever been to an uh, exhibit of James Terrell, you might have seen one of these. Um, these drench you in color and are so disorienting that people have been known to like, be exhausted and lean against the wall, but there's no wall behind them and they just fall down. <laughs> Uh, this is an excerpt from one of my performances, and the room, you know, when the room looks like this, I'm very happy. Um, also drawing from concrete or visual poetry, where letter forms are used not in an informational sense. And finally, well, finally, not finally, but I, I also draw from this phenomena of light shows in the 60s, where people would be using slide projectors and movie projectors and overhead projectors with trays of colored gels and liquids to make, you know, in, in performance with uh, rock and roll music. And finally, uh, I'm inter uh, in, in, uh, inspired by touch interfaces that electronic musicians use. I was particularly inspired by a guy named John Lydecker who performs as Wobbly and is also a member of the group Negative Land, which you may have heard of. Um, my idea was, you know, if I could rig up my iPad to have color wheels for different geographic layers and I could control things like bearing and rotation and pitch, add a few of my experimental film ideas, control the length, the width of roads, and so on. This would be kind of a useful rapid prototyping tool. Uh, I could also control elements of the HTML page, like margins and backgrounds. Um, and I could have a similar thing for uh, labeling for the fonts. So um, I was able to go to a Rust Belt town called Owego in New York um, for two weeks, two years. Worked on this project. I have the second floor of that yellow building. And what I created, I call Cardo OSC. Um, the main components are MapLibre now. This is now, not then, but now. Uh, I'm, us I'm using proto maps. I use this music software, basically, called Open Stage Control. And then there's a bunch of my own JavaScript that holds it together. Um, OSC also means Open Sound Control. It's a protocol, kind of like MIDI, if you've heard of that but the namespace is under your control, so I can have endpoints that messages go to, such as slash background color, slash earth color, slash natural color, send messages there and have the, my software convert that into style instructions for MapLibre. Similar things for the roads, similar things for the movement. And this is uh, when you crack open open stage control, there is this editing panel where you can not only control which widget you get, and the size and location, but what it actually sends. So uh, I might send these two messages, which first go to label country and say, use the Stoke regular font at 108.37 pixels, uh, and then change the color to this HSLA uh, value. Okay, um, I use that to make a film. This is short, but it does strobe. They called for 15 second tributes to Gene Youngblood, who is a media theorist who wrote about the Velvet Underground. So that's what that was. Uh, yeah, sorry, not sorry. Um, and then I got to go to Lisbon. Um, this was my studio, which had two work surfaces, a bed, kind of a crappy kitchen, and a million dollar view. Um, and I swore while I was there that in, in, I was working on a number of projects, but it's like, I'm going to do a performance before I leave here using this touch surface thing that I was telling you about. Um, and I needed a name for it, and I called it a Synesthetes Atlas. My first collaborator was Helena Estball on cello and electronics. And then here's a few, short, time is short, but here are some examples of other performances. All the five musicians. Thank you. 
I wish I could show you all of them, but there isn't time. Um, those were Feet Performances and John Engel on saxophone. I didn't get to the others. Some of these you'll find in my Instagram feed if you want to go look for them. Um, so anyway, I feel like on the strength of that performance work, that's how I got the um, commission for the tower. Uh, what I decided to do instead of the view shed and instead of the circle was to do a spiral starting at the footprint of the building, working out all the way to Bellinas, which is at the upper left-hand corner. So the camera basically follows that. Um, and that was the title. You can look that up, too. It's long. <laughs> the workflow is to basically code a sequence, capture it with QuickTime, do a translation with FFM MPEG, and then pull it into some video editing software. So I'll show you some examples. You know, what I would see on my screen would be something like this, full screen. Because of the way the building is, I would have to shift things up, shift the rotation up so it was above the slots and make it narrower, which is what the FFmpeg state, state did. And then I would eventually get to something that looked like this, which has five copies of it, one for each side of the building. This is a uh, 1280 by, no, 1024 by 280 pixel MP4, and that's what they run on the building. They give you these masks to help you. And the fun part is meeting in the parking lot of Fifth and Brandon and seeing what you've done. So Emma, who emailed me, and Jim Campbell are, have their backs to us. Um, yes, and sorry, I'm getting nervous. Uh, you know, it's really quite a trip for Jim Campbell to sit at his laptop and say, are you ready for the next one? And then this giant skyscraper half a mile away shows your work. <laughs> and then you look at it and decide if it's working or not. So this is an example of, yeah, I spent, I paid off a guy to send a drone up. This is the beginning where the spiral starts and all the base stuff refers to transit, transit terminals in the bottom of the building. But, uh, you know, San Francisco is a lovely place. Darker, <laughs> it looks like this. Um, I'm quite a fan of the redac a redaction script font. So these are all restaurant names in South of Market, but they're obliterated, so they really can't be read. And then there's one section where I actually use two sides of the building rather than four, and it's a, a OSRM routing down Lombard Street. So it's quite jumpy down the crookedest street in the world, as they say. Um, but anyway, quite a beautiful thing, quite a thrill to have your work up for a month uh, for the city and a whole lot of other people to see. <laughs> um, and then, am I out of time? Pretty much. Um, Take a look at my site. This is a, a, an accelerated version that sh that actually shows the spiral pretty clearly. But yeah, I don't really I don't want to cut into the next speaker's talk. Um, I'm giving some more talks. I'm going to be in Europe for a long time. I'm doing most of these. I'm waiting to hear about the one in Linz and the Bell M conference in South America. That call hasn't even closed yet. But I like traveling with this. Um, when I travel, I like to tour. So I am lining up performances in all these places. I have a printmaking residency in Amsterdam where I will be making paper versions of some of these maps. And you can sign up for my mailing list and uh, I'm done. Thank you.